So a brief look at the 1970s in our small village. In 1970, they formed the health auxiliary for our new health center. And they built a sidewalk on the main street. And I think it's the same sidewalk that's there today. I don't think it was ever replaced. We had discussions with Mr. Jawanda in Victoria replanning for the village. And there were discussions about boundary expansion. And that the hill property, which is where the United Church is, we looked at that because that was not within the existing village boundaries. In 1971, with a population of 157, the fire department sold their first 1947 International Harvester, IHC, I think that stands for the yeah, Harvester, yeah. van to an as an auxiliary vehicle for $210 to a Mrs. Karen Westlake. And that was the year that there was an avalanche at the joint intake on January 18, 1971, washed up the water system. The Tisdale garbage dump, the one out on Highway 99, was selected as a site for our regional garbage dump. And the Evans Mill opened in 1971. In 1972, oh, we purchased another fire truck. And the resuscitator was purchased for the health center for use by the fire department. The condominiums were constructed. And then in 1973, this is the year of the big winter freeze-ups, and we came to the conclusion that we needed a better water system. And when I uh, became mayor, which was um, in 1979, um, nobody really had left the village very much to go to Victoria or anywhere. So there was a visit in 1973, however, to Victoria about the new floodplain uh, legislation. Mm -hmm. And I can remember arguing with people in Victoria at that time saying, you're nuts, you think there's going to be water from mountain to mountain in this valley, it'll never happen. Well, as we progress to the years, you'll see what happened. In 1973, we raised the clerk's salary to $600 a month. And that was the year that the provincial government instituted the new agricultural land reserve regulations. There were fire hydrants installed in the village. And there was a road built to the new water intake so that we, they could drag line in when we needed to. The village streets were named at that time. They were named after trees and, and, uh, and flowers and that type of thing. And signs were placed around the village. And in 1973, we also studied and looked at the formation of a district municipality. And they're still doing that today, some quite a few years later. The Lions Club constructed a ski hill up on the hill. There were two modulars brought in for the Signal Hill classrooms. And there was a meeting with the Minister of Municipal Affairs, again, regarding a district municipality. So in 1974, there were public meetings regarding a district municipality. And there was continued work on our waterworks. Water always seemed to be a problem in this municipality. Uh, a new 100,000 gallon water tank was constructed. And we also put a new roof on the municipal building. And this was the year that Evans Mill closed down. So in 1975 was our first Canada Day celebrations. And actually it was Canada Week. We had two weeks of celebration, the first community in Canada to celebrate Canada Day or Canada Week uh, for two weeks. And we actually had coverage on CBC television uh, that year as well. The village agreed to participate with the regional district on the maintenance and operation of garbage dumps. and. Um, boundary expansion that we had requested was put on hold because of the mill situation. And there was a request that we asked the airport reserve that was held by the regional district be transferred to the village of Pemberton. The Pemberton Museum train visited Pemberton. And the info center that year was operated by Betty Talbot next to where the teachers are. And the chamber provided the funding uh, for the rent of the building. This was the year of the large native blockade of uh, the Duffy Lake Road in Mount Curry. There was a land swap of the health center property, which is now where the new community center is located, and the ex Don Cedar Mill property, and that's where your new uh, health center is located. And there was discussion of either having a lagoon out on Birdall Road or else a sewage treatment plant. And it was more than just a discussion, it was almost a battle in this community. <laughs> so of course we obviously went the sewage treatment plant, not the lagoon. So in 1976, our population was 197. We sent our first Miss Pemberton to the Miss Canada pageant back in Toronto, in Niagara Falls. Um, 
the Squamish Little Regional District moved into their portion of the new building above the fire hall. Evans Mill, um, as a result of their closure, there was the Pemberton Valley Labor Force Development Committee formed uh, under the direction of Dr. Bill Webby, who looked at the results of the mill closure on the community. And you can see, I think the report is here, this yellow book over here. Building permits that year totaled $363,000, which is quite a bit for uh, a year when things were closing down. And again, we continued to discuss our sewage options. In 1977, the population is up a bit. We're at 364, and the hill property became part of the village. And we decided to go ahead with a sewage treatment plant to serve 500 people. We were really looking ahead. Okay? We, the Pemberton sign that you see at One Mile Lake was carved as a winter works project by a Mike Smith. Um, we tried to do things that didn't cost money in those days. We did, everything was done either on a volunteer basis, and in this sign, I think we got a $2,500 grant. So that paid this person's salary and he carved the sign for us during the winter. So in 1978, um, the population uh, was a little bit larger again. No, it dropped a bit, 339. This was the year of the Captain Cook Bicentennial celebrations throughout the province, and that was a big celebration in this community as well. There was a shape and shingle mill built by Tisdale Lumber. We received a sewer grant for $362,000 and a loan of $487,000. And we also got a lease for the airport property and we hired our first maintenance man. You see, everything was done on a voluntary basis to this point. So now we would actually pay someone to do some of the work. In 1979, the population again dropped a bit, 318. We had our first local contest. We reconstructed the Public Works building, which used to be the old water reservoir that BC Rail had. We purchased a dump truck, a plow, and a sander uh, so that we could do our own winter maintenance. And we completed the sewage treatment plant. We paved two more village streets. We got a $15,000 grant for official community plan. We got a grant to do the survey of the airport. The provincial parks actually prepared a rough design plan for One Mile Lake and the BC Development Corporation purchased the Evans Mill site for the industrial park, and that's where you see today's industrial park. The population was 308, so the population sort of stays around 300 for a good number of years. We adopted our first official community plan, and we got a planning grant to do a zoning and subdivision bylaw. We did a socioeconomic study with funding that we got from the Ministry of Economic Development. We did contour mapping of the uplands property, uh, and that was done by the Ministry of Lands, Parks and Housing. And they redid the same plan again a number of years later under the new council. Uh, the seven acres of Crown land were sold by the Crown uh, for a residential subdivision. And the village got very brave that year and decided to, uh, because they had a 10 acre parcel of land, they did a, uh, a subdivision on Poplar Street. We also received 33 hectares of land that was granted for the airport, and the Premier visited and um, gave us a $13,000 lottery grant for the purchase of a minibus. Now, th this is probably one of the smaller grants, but probably the one that I worked the hardest for, because I would go to Victoria, and I knew where the Premier lived. The Premier stayed in the Harbour Tower, so I would stay there. I knew what time he went down the elevator, and I would go in the elevator so I could walk with him to the apartment buildings, and we would always talk about this lottery grant for this minibus, so we could take our children from the school back and forth to, to ball games. We eventually got the grant and got tired of uh, meeting me. Uh, we purchased pagers for the fire department. We paved the front street in cooperation with BC Rail. And we uh, put signage out at the airport. We coated the village water, water tank. And lo and behold, our community hall burned down in December of that year. And on December 26th, we also had a big flood. 